90 to 85 in overtime at league leading Florida Atlantic. Let's take a look at Louisiana Tech's starters. It's Willis, it's Crawford, Hunter, Mangum, and Isaiah Crawford. That's the five that uh, will try to get Louisiana Tech back on the winning side of things. And it's going to meet a ball club that last year was 16 and 2 in the seven points or less. Six of those decided by two points or less. Yeah, it's been down to the wire for sure uh, over the last several years between these teams. Louisiana Tech in white. The mean green. Trying to win for the seventh straight time this year and trying to win in this building for the third straight year. This is Perry with eight on the shot clock. Perry is double teamed out at the top. Smith gets it down low. A little jump hook from about seven feet away rolls out. That one missed by Abu Usman. He's chasing a milestone two and six point shy of scoring his 700th career point. Here's Crawford. Perry digging in defensively. Crawford tries to cross over. Willis does cross over with a dribble, but he's cut off. Shot clock at eight. First possession for Louisiana Tech. Crawford backs away. Shot clock at two. The other Crawford throws it across the defense on a shot clock violation. And Louisiana Tech never was able to penetrate, never got into any offensive rhythm. And uh, that defense we talked about, Chris, immediately showing itself for UNT. It's not just one of the best in this conference, Lynn. It's one of the best in the country yeah, we're find show, every which way to shut teams down we're going to show you a graphic uh, in a moment that, that illustrates just how good this UNT team is Chris you're absolutely correct not only is it the best in conference USA it is nearly the best in the land look at the battle down low and finally working for position is Usman who missed the first shot but just kept backing in faking 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 and was able to get close and drop it home now here's a look at that scoring defense that we mentioned the only team better in the nation is Houston they're averaging 55 points per game for their opponents UNT it's at 55.6 and some elite company elsewhere in that top five no question a fall down jump shot won't go for Louisiana Tech as Jordan Crawford missed it. He's a 6 3 freshman from Ruston. Kai Hunsberry dumps it off and they go back down to Usman. Hunsberry is cut off and a steal up front. And the missed dunk, but a foul called. So shot opportunities are coming as Crawford couldn't get it over the rim. Should have gone for the basic lay-in right there instead of trying to throw it down for the highlight. Trying to make one with the steal and the slam coming up short, but he will head to the charity strike. Crawford wearing the pink shoes tonight. And the first free throw is no good. He was a Class B state MVP in high school. Also a state champion in track he won four louisiana high school championship titles at simsboro high school and he bags the second free throw willis will try to dig in and back court perry brings it up to huntsbury perry has to go get it he'll take the deep three it's online but a little bit short rebound is off the hands of usman and it'll go back to louisiana tech right now chris it's pretty much a two-team race in conference usa florida atlantic has been amazing they've beaten this unt team twice so the owls look like they'll have that number one seed wrapped up heading to frisco for the conference tournament the unt hanging in there hoping the owls will falter well unt one of the best teams in the league of course only lost six games the entire year 
That's rejected by Crawford. Then he runs into his own man, and the loose ball finally goes out of bounds. This has the making of a heavyweight fight. Now, these Louisiana Tech players know the kind of deficit they're facing this evening, but they're going to fight for every inch here inside the tack. There's a look at your Conference USA standings. Again, two games back in the loss column to Florida Atlantic. And right now, FAU looking like a team that if they can win out in conference play, it won't matter what happens in Frisco. They'll be going to the big dance no matter what, which if the Owls... A Baylor graduate, a walk-on at that school, and a guy whose mentality is pretty much never give up, whatever it takes. Well, he wants to have the toughest team on the floor each time. And his coaching style changes based on his personnel. You look back when he coached in junior college, some of those teams were absolutely run and gun, whereas UNT this year, due to the personnel, they slow it down. This is a very deliberate offense. Crawford backs in but can't get it to go from the right block. Louisiana Tech has gone three and a half minutes without a bucket. UNT has only one. Ball movement from UNT and a three ball is up and a three ball is good. Knocked home by Reuben James. That's his 16th triple of the season. Reuben coming off his best game of the year. Young man from Houston. Had five assists, scored 12 points. He averages six with three rebounds. He's also had to deal with knee surgery during his career. Here's Crawford on the move. One on two, slips through and misses. We'll take our timeout right here. 5 1, North Texas leading. Indeed, this has been very entertaining, very competitive, very knockdown, drag out basketball between these teams in the last several years. Before that, Chris, Louisiana Tech has had a lot of success against. UNT. Well, UNT certainly having some really high highs right now. It hasn't been very long since they were winning game in the NCAA tournament, taking out Purdue in the big dance. And certainly look to have the tools that it takes to get that done again if they can punch their ticket. Isaiah Crawford powers his way for the first Louisiana Tech bucket. Louisiana Tech digging in defensively. This is Stewart. Kicks it left side. Three ball up and off the mark. An opportunity there for Keiston Willis, but he couldn't get it to go down. Good work down low, though, by Kenny Hunter. He just stayed with it and would not be denied. Now, really, really well done. Young man that only was able to contribute four points against Florida Atlantic on Saturday. Louisiana Tech will need much more from him today. So back-to-back -back possessions result in profit for Louisiana Tech. The Bulldogs have tied the game against the main green at five apiece. We've seen this a few times. That's Abu Usman, who is slick and powerful and quick down low. And he was able to score and draw a foul. He could reach a milestone here at the line, two points away from scoring his 700th career point. Usman, a junior out of Brooklyn, New York. He stands 6'10". He averages 11.2 points a game. And six rebounds, and that latter number is the number one mark on this ball club. Usman is in 60... 3.4% free throw shooter, and he drops that one. Excuse my error there. Of course, just one shot in this trip to the free throw line. So he'll have to wait until he comes back off the bench. Now one point away from that 700-point mark on his career. But somebody who helped UNT get out to a great start against Charlotte on Saturday. Mean Green made their first four attempts at the game. Three of them were from long range, and then throw in a good Usman slam for a good measure. Louisiana Tech tried to keep it alive. That pass is intercepted by Tyler Perry. Perry has only attempted one shot and came up a little bit short from distance.
There is a battle down low in the post. That time they denied Usman the basketball, Louisiana Tech, with some physical defense. Three ball up from the right side. Skids off the rim by Willis. Stewart will follow. He can't get it to go. Stewart runs it down as two players hit the deck. Now Stewart will wait for his teammates to set up offensively. Man-to-man -man defense for North Texas. 8-5, Louisiana Tech trailing after tying it at five. Three on the shot clock and a throw away. Louisiana Tech is battling, Chris, but it's not been crisp so far on a couple of occasions. And when you're working to get those second and third chances against this caliber of a defense, you have to capitalize. You can't throw that away, literally or figuratively. <laughs> Barry keeps it for a potential three-point shot. Now it will come from the left side, and it comes up a little bit short by Tyler Perry. Twice he has left three balls just a, an inch or so short. Stutter dribble. Willis gets down low, slips beyond the defender, and scores from the left side with the right hand. Keiston Willis, the junior from Sulphur. His mother and father played collegiate basketball. And he, of course, was a big scorer at UIW in the Southland Conference. Tremendous player there. Really one of the most coveted properties in the transfer portal when he entered there out of UIW. He's been a huge contributor here for Tech and needs to come up even bigger now. Aaron Scott with a leaning short shot, a 6'7 sophomore from Spring, Texas. He averages six a game. He's made every start this year. So has Usman, so has Huntsbury. And so has Edie. Perry has made 24 of the 26 starts. He missed a couple of games. Tech gets it down low and finds some profit with that possession. That's Will Allen, a 6'7 redshirt freshman out of New Orleans. One of nine children. Somebody who hasn't been able to contribute much so far this season. Came off the bench the last seven games. He started before that. So trying to work his way back in, really making a difference down the stretch. UNT by one. A foul call as the bucket goes down. Let's see if they count it. Yes, they will. And we'll take a timeout as we wait for the old-fashioned three-point play attempt. And this will be Scott at the line. Looking He's looking for the old-fashioned three-point play, which would give him five points. To reset our top story of the night in Louisiana Tech without the services of Kobe Williams, no longer on the team. The university saying it's due to personal issues. Leading scorer for Louisiana Tech, scored a 1,000 career points for the Bulldogs and a two-time member of the CUSA All-Defensive Team. And a three-year starter for the Bulldogs. Missing their leading score. Tech now tying it up at 12 with just under 11 minutes to go. Courtesy of Caleb Stewart, a sophomore from Houston. His father played college basketball. His mother played volleyball in college. This is Jones trying to beat Crawford. Gets into the lane, makes a slick pass down to Usman. He lost it, but... A good follow-up. Aaron Scott putting it in last time against Louisiana Tech. Was perfect from the field. Six for six. Well, he's got six early points here, does Scott. He is the game's leading scorer. Both of these teams have been very efficient in these, this last stanza here, Lynn. Tech 4-4. From their, or their last four of their last four shots, and UNT trying to match it here. They're three of their last three. That was Keiston Willis with the last bucket as Louisiana Tech gets the tie at 14. A foul is called. Louisiana Tech has found a rhythm offensively now. 
and has been profitable with its last four possessions, but Scott will shoot a pair. He's a 63.9% free throw shooter. Chris, he is really good from the field as well. Now, a lot of those shots are point blank range, but he's hitting 55% of his shots overall. I mentioned how great of a performance he had in the initial matchup between these two teams. 12 points. He topped that performance three days later. His season high 14 came at FAU. Let's go quickly to Madison Kaufman. Madison, what do you have for us? on and Aaron Scott has truly grown the most in his confidence this season. He's a natural distributor who helps make big plays and he loves to reward guys who get the mentality that you can succeed in doing the things that other people aren't willing to. No question about that. He did describe him as emerging one of the players who is better now than he was a month ago. Hard work underneath by Hunter and it pays off. Kenny Hunter has been a factor off the bench, the 6'10 sophomore from Shreveport. A strength on strength there between yeah. Hunter and Uzman, and Hunter able to knock it down, backing away and then driving towards the hoop as the Mean Green throws a counterpunch. Kai Hunsberry doing that, a 6'3 senior out of New Orleans, who started his career at the University of Mary. He, too, is one of those players who has come on the last month or so. Now, I've obviously heard about William and Mary. But this was my first experience hearing about the University of Just Just Mary. There's no William there. I wish you hadn't have asked me because I don't know any more than that. No. Three mean green players were there, and uh, none of them could collect it as they pinballed off each other. Did Mary start her own school after leaving William? <laughs> I don't know. Seems like a little excessive alimony to me. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll put some research people on it. Crawford driving to the hoop, able to get his own rebound after not drawing iron. Stewart launches it. Did it beat the shot clock? Apparently it did. And that point about not drawing iron was why the shot clock continued to run. You know, so far, Chris, Tyler Perry has been shut out. He's only taken a couple of three-ball attempts. He's come up a little bit short on both of them. Let's see what he does here. Fakes right, dribbles left, backs up, kicks it over to Huntsbury. Perry wants it back. Perry can't shoot. Crawford was quick to defend him. Perry sneaking inside and lost the dribble. It will go back to Louisiana Tech. That is really, really good defense by Crawford. Yeah, tremendous job there, and Huntsbury trying to get something done alongside Perry and neither of them able to help that be a quality offensive possession and now Perry hits the bench Chris you ask and I'm going to answer the University <laughs> of Mary is a private Benedictine University near Bismarck North Dakota that's why we why we pay our research department the big bucks right yep research department of one he's good with Google There'll be an extra water in your paycheck at the end of the night. Mr. Lolly on the research tonight. Nobody better. 17-16. This game is mirroring what so many have been before. That's blocked by Kenny Hunter. He was able to slide in there and slap it down. Look at the left-handed acrobatic shot and a foul. Oh my, Caleb Stewart with some acrobatics, a gymnastics type move, and he will be at the line. Mates would trust him to take that important of an attempt. So Louisiana Tech, after finding points hard to come by early, starting to rally a bit and leading by one now, the first lead for the Bulldogs. Aaron Scott is the leading scorer in the game. He's got seven. Usman has five for the mean green. That'll be an over and back violation. So Louisiana Tech has a chance to extend its one-point lead, 18-17, with seven minutes to go here in Ruston. We're in the first half. 
And Chris, we've talked about how the competitive nature of these teams over the last several years. Right now, this ball game is following that script. Yeah, absolutely. Very much so, Lynn. These teams, it doesn't seem it matters what is the news coming in. The roster changes, whoever's available, whoever's not, they still battle it out every time. And it's always incredibly tight, expecting more of the same this season. Crawford flips that away. He was fronting. Abu Usman and was able to knock the ball out of bounds Crawford has yet to really get started offensively, but he's really playing hard interior defense This Crawford Usman battle is something to watch Crawford wears number 22 in white Usman number 33 in green Crawford making it very hard for UNT to get it inside there. So instead, go the other direction and work it away from Crawford. That's Huntsbury on a slick move to the left side of the bucket. Willis lost it. Lost it again. Look at these players diving for it. That's one of the things that uh, really turns the UNT coaching staff on to see that kind of hustle. Blocked by Crawford, but a foul on Crawford. You know, Chris, I, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about how the Mean Green actually got their nickname. It's not from Joe Green. No, it's, that's a coincidence there, Lynn. Mean Joe Green, of course, a former North Texas student athlete, but he really didn't get that name until he was with the Pittsburgh Steelers. It was really in reference to the defense and the team overall for UNT in the late 60s. Of course, we're in those green uniforms, but despite that, Mean Joe Green still regularly on campus at UNT. You see him a lot at football games out at Apogee Stadium in the fall. Well, his name has an E on the end of it, too. That's true. Guzman bags both free throws. He's number two on the team in scoring. Actually, number three at 11.2 a game. It's going to be called on Perry as that ball was being kicked around like a pinball or Actually like a ping-pong ball in a bathtub back and forth. It was going players were bouncing off each other Twenty-one eighteen Louisiana Tech down by one possession Allen had it knocked away underneath the bucket and a foul on Usman, I believe. That's team foul number six. Two shots coming for Allen. You have to go all the way back to the season opener to find Allen's season high nine points against Mississippi College. He did not play last year, Will Allen, because of a shoulder injury. Tech had gone a couple of minutes without scoring after taking the lead, and Allen was able to bring Louisiana Tech a little bit closer with one free throw. Five minutes and some change remaining. Louisiana Tech has done an outstanding job of throwing a blanket on Tyler Perry down low. And there is Usman again. Chris, he's so active down around the baseline. You described this tonight as a heavyweight fight down low, and Usman just throwing a big haymaker. Yep. Now, interestingly enough, on the other end, Scott is guarding Crawford. A fall down three is good as Stewart rips the bottom of the net from distance left side. Stewart's had to earn his opportunities 
this season. Coach Hester telling us that he, when he has a great week of practice, he typically will have a great outing in the game. And so far tonight, that's been the case. Eight points. Matthew Stone checks out of the game. A sophomore from Kingfisher, Oklahoma. Hunt Perry will throw it in play. Perry wide open for three from straight away, and there's his first one. To show you how good Perry is, he's got 77 made three-pointers this year. That's not a misprint. That was number 77. Took him a while to get there tonight if he can get hot. North Texas and pull away. Crawford misses from distance. I think, Texas, you, four. I think UNT would take that if they, you, they were told you only have a four-point lead, but it'll be with Perry only having three points, knowing that he can certainly turn it on later. And does he? Yes, that's two straight. Right on your cue, he backs up and rips the bottom of the net. He is that type of shooter. And now he is ahead of his scoring total from all of last year. 420 points in the 20, excuse me, the 21-22 season. Jones takes it all the way in, switches to the left hand and leaves it a little bit short. And it's going to go back to Louisiana Tech. 422 career points now for Tyler Perry after hitting two been able to say given how well Tech plays in the tack and we talked about how close this matchup has been over the years six of the last 13 decided by two points or less these teams are going separate ways conference wise next season North Texas into the American La Tech remaining in CUSA but given the proximity and given how competitive these games have been I really hope this series does not come to an end. Why not play every year? I could not agree more. Bullock drills the three. That's a bucket Louisiana Tech needed. Louisiana Tech now trailing by four. Stewart pulls up. Shot may have been deflected a little bit and a whistle. Andre Bullock just coming off the bench and nailing that three. That's a bucket Louisiana Tech needed, Chris, because that seven-point lead prior to the three ball was the biggest lead of the game. North Texas had gone on a 6 nothing run at that point. And the entire attitude and climate of the locker room will be determined by what happens over the next two minutes and 34 seconds. Hunter is looking for his fifth point, and he gets it. Both of these coaches, when we talked to them this week, talked about attitude and effort. Those are the two things you can control. You can't control who's going to be on the floor with you on a given day. You can't control the officials' calls. So many things that they do not affect. But those two things, attitude and effort. And I think tonight both of them are doing that in a high clip. Good attitude, good effort, and so far we've got a really nice ball game going. Hunter's two free throws make it a two-point lead for UNT. Perry lobs it down into the hands of Scott for the bucket. Nicely done. Perry recognized that Scott on the weak side had an opportunity to go the, to the uh, hoop, and he's got nine points now. He and Usman lead with nine points each. Stewart hands it off to Willis. Fakes right, dribbles left, comes back right, spinning, spinning, kicks it. Stewart does not take the three. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Eight to fire. Fade away, deuce from the right side. Won't go. Big offensive rebound by Hunter. He keeps it alive himself. Look at him, working hard. This is Stewart. He'll take the three. A uh -uh. little bit long, and the rebound is grabbed by Aaron Scott. Look at the body bumping as Usman misses that jump. The Bulldogs respond with a dunk on the other end. The dunk 
Washington Dogs get one. It's Quandre Bullock, and he's come off the bench and provided an offensive spark. Coach Hester needs players. Quality action between the Cougars and the Bulldogs. Of course, Lane Burroughs Ball Club coming off an appearance in the NCAA tournament after winning the CUSA tournament title. So let's see what Louisiana Tech can do. It's had only one lead in this game. As we work toward the one-minute mark, this is Huntsbury. Here's that battle down low. Hunter is defending Usman. Usman slips by and finishes the two-handed dunk. Chris, he is slippery and powerful down low. Use your power and strength. That had to be part of the message to Usman on the bench during that last time out after he wasn't able to draw much of anything on the previous attempt. Hey, just go in and slam it. Crawford will back away. Seven on the shot clock. Three seconds to shoot. That was not a good possession for Louisiana Tech. UNT defense does that to you. They never stop working on the defensive end. You know, they've got that saying, defense travels. Sometimes you're going to have an off night, but defense, you talked about it, Chris, effort, want to, brain work, defense travels. Four seconds to fire. One second, Perry gets it away and misses, and Louisiana Tech was able to extend its defensive zone and prevent UNT from getting a good look at the last opportunity. It's halftime, and we've got a close one here. Session game, despite a 37% completion percentage, and Louisiana Tech, I think a bit surprisingly, has out-rebounded North Texas. There's been a lot of want-to rebounding. For Louisiana Tech assists are about the same three-point shooting is equal at three made for each here's some good news for UNT though mm -hmm. when it's leading at the half this year and it's happened 15 uh, 17 times it's 15 and 2 when leading at the half but that man says hey wait a minute we'll uh, we'll just play it out a three ball by Keiston Willis in his career Grant McCaslin is 101 and 20 when leading at the half. That's remarkable. Scott comes back. We've got a three point game. As Louisiana Tech goes back on offense, to remind you, Kobe Williams. No longer on the team. That news coming down just before tip-off tonight. Averaging 18.8 points per season. Also a two-time all-defensive team selection in Conference USA. Out tonight and for the rest of the year. And that was the big question when we heard that news, Lynn, is how would his teammates react? And so far, hanging in there against one of the best teams in CUSA. Calvin Hester, sometimes you have to make those hard choices. Of course, we don't have all the information on everything involved with this change on the roster. But it's regardless of how it went down, that's a tough blow for a first-year head coach to lose a player like that. Three weeks left in the regular season when you hope you can make that miracle run in the conference tournament and get into March Madness. Willis. Took an arm across the neck. It's a non-shooting foul. Louisiana Tech has done a really nice job. Willis tosses in another deep three. That one from straight away. We've got a tie ball game at 35. Louisiana Tech has led only once in this game by one point earlier in the first half. But that three ball can be an equalizer, can it, Chris? And they need Will Willis to do that. Maybe not from that far out every time, but if he can, if they can establish him offensively throughout this second half, going to be a huge boost for Lotte. Huntsbury is able to power his way in. He's got six points. UNT quickly comes back to take the lead. Willis lost it. 
It looked like he might have dribbled it off his own foot before it went out of bounds, but it was touched last by UNT. Reuben Jones comes back into the game for UNT. Crawford fades, fires, and hits it. He absorbed a blow on his way into the lane and was able to toss it up softly. That strength in a young man who's worked back from two different season-ending injuries. Yeah, he's been really one of those hard luck players in his career. It'd be great to see him healthy for at least one entire season. Crawford, as you see, wears the left brace on that knee. Willis trying to sneak inside. Swatted down as Willis goes down. Here come the mean green the other way. Huntsbury gives it up to Scott, who feeds a teammate along the baseline. Kick out to Huntsbury for three. Boom. Excellent ball movement by the mean green, Chris. They really got everybody involved quickly. Huntsbury, somebody who just continues to grow in his confidence. Scored the last eight points in UNT's game against UAB. That's usually been Perry's role to take yep. over in those waning moments. Well, that was the 34th converted triple of the season for Huntsbury. That's number two on the team. Number two to Tyler Perry, who's got nearly 80 of them. Nobody home for Louisiana Tech. The lead is three for UNT, and they can add to it right here. Guzman was able to slide through but missed it with the left hand. UNT takes it back. Guzman wants it. He's got it. Defended by Hunter. Look at this battle. Boy, they are really letting them pound inside, aren't they? And Hunter doing a great job keeping him away from the rim, not letting him flush it. Had to settle for that off-balance shot. Boy, it's like bumper cars in that lane down low. Crawford nearly lost the dribble. Isaiah Crawford, double team. He almost threw it away. Three on the shot clock, and a very difficult three ball is up, and a foul called. The mean green fouling on an off balance low percentage three point attempt percentage shot from uh, nearly the sideline and Willis was fouled on that play so he's got a chance to convert three free throws now that allows Tech to end its scoring drought but it continues two minutes and 15 seconds is where it stands right now since the last time the Bulldogs have put a point on the scoreboard Louisiana Tech is now only four for eight, make it four for nine. Well, actually, they ruled out a two-point shot, so Willis with a couple of free throws, but Louisiana Tech has left five points at the free throw line, Chris. That's the difference in the game right now. A little teardrop runner from the baseline will not fall for Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry, who is a superb shooter from distance, has been held in check tonight. He went most of the first half without scoring and is 2 for 7 now from the field. His first six shots have been three-pointers. When talking to Coach McCaslin about Perry a couple of days ago, he said, you know, he's not an elite athlete, just somebody who is efficient especially in the half-court game. He knows he's very smart, can get the job done, and he is the only mean green player that has the green light to shoot immediately from the perimeter. Everybody else, the command is to get it down low first before kicking it back outside. Crawford skids to a stop, kicks it back to a teammate. This is Bullock. This is for three on line. And we could tell from our vantage point when it left his hand. That was going to hit the bullseye. Pretty look. Putting it up there. Feeling it. 
immediately throwing up the three fingers, and we have a brand new ball game with 14 and a half minutes to go. Louisiana Tech now six for 16 from three-point range. That's a pretty good percentage. Tyree Eady works his way to the lane, and that is his first bucket tonight. Eady has started in every game. Six five six year player from Worcester, Massachusetts, by way of North Dakota State. Be surprised that Edie took this long to get points. He's coming off one of his best performances of the year, Lynn. Scored 10 in the win over Charlotte on Saturday, including a couple of three-pointers. Yeah, he's not a big scorer. 3.6 points a game. Does have 19 trays. Bullock goes right back to the free throw line. And UNT last week started with a double overtime game against UAB. Mean Green came out on top there and then had to reset to play against Charlotte. So the question was asked to Edie, are legs going to be tired for the next game after dealing with double OT? He said probably not because this team, regardless of anything, they know how much more they have to accomplish, and they feel like physically they were well prepared to bounce back from that extra time. We've got a one-point game. North Texas trying to win on the road. A slick feed down low into the hands of Mulai Sissoko. And that's his first bucket. He's out of Mali and started his career at Dayton. Now that's a basketball crazy place. Three ball, right side. Oh, yes! Willis from the corner. Crosses in the three. And Louisiana Tech now with seven converted three-pointers, shooting almost 50% from out court. 44 apiece. Well, Crawford got a hand on that ball. They did not call the tie, and it goes out of bounds, and two players hit the deck. It's the Bulldogs' possession. And, Chris, we are starting to get to the point where this is mimicking so many other games these teams have played against each other, especially in recent years. We can't be surprised, can we? No. It's it's amazing how often these teams just play tight ones. It never fails. I mean, when you look at it, 13 games in a row, the deficit at the end has never been more than double digits. And then you throw in six games that were within two points. Isaiah Crawford tried to feed a teammate across the lane, and he hit the bottom of the, of the backboard with that pass. I think the only thing at the start of the night that gave us pause to think maybe this run of tight ball games between the Mean Green and the Bulldogs would end would be the lack of Kobe Williams for Louisiana Tech. No longer on the team. We found that out just before tip-off tonight. And given him being out, every reason to think the Mean Green may be able to run away with this this evening. Seven on the shot clock. Scott lobs it down low. It's caught down there. And then the reverse layup by Usman. Boy, he is strong. He is slippery. He is mobile. And he's got all kinds of moves around the bucket. And that was just tremendous body control, what he was able to do, starting out behind the backboard, able to work his way to get that bucket. Look at the hustle by Scott as he saves the ball and goes slamming into the first row of seats and fans. Usman again, just too much strength, too much height, and too much body control. 11.41 to go in this second half. Guys, we've been talking about the dramatic fashion of the games between these two teams. In fact, at Coach McCaslin's first game at UNT, their meeting against Tech ended in a one-point heartbreaker on free throws with .9 seconds to play. Then last season in January, UNT made a 17-point comeback against the Dogs. And in their final meeting of the 2022 season, the Dogs downed the top-seeded Mean Green in the Conference USA semifinals with a 42-36 final score. 
42-36. That's an unusual score, but that illustrates what we've been talking about all night, just the competitive nature. Look at Isaiah Crawford as he's double teamed, and finally, somebody hacked him. Huntsbury is charged with the foul. Coming up on the midway point of this second half, and only one player from either team with three personal fouls, and that's Reuben Jones for UNT. Three ball up and a little bit long from the left side. That one was online, but Bullock missed it a little bit strong. 48-44. North Texas leading. Huntsbury finds a teammate slicing to the bucket, and that's the first hoop from Matthew Stone after a very nice dish, Chris. Stone last game, three points in 17 minutes. He's just averaging 2.7 points per game this year, but comes through in the clutch. That's his first bucket. He's had a couple of starts. Crawford pitches it in the corner. Ten seconds to fire as we near the midway point in the second half. Bullock backs up, takes the three, in and out. Rebound, Usman. Who has six of them. Three ball left side, a little bit long. Look at the battle for the rebound, and it is physical. These big guys in the post are going to wear some bruises after this game. Coming back in for North Texas, Aaron Scott, who's had a nice night. Scott returns to the lineup with 11 points. Usman, the game's leading scorer, can't back in from there. That ball tipped out of bounds on the pass to the wing by Bullock. Look at the size advantage down low in mm -hmm. these lineups mm -hmm. for North Texas with Usman and Scott against Crawford down there. He's the only one who can battle them. UNT really trying to force the issue. All those big men down low and Crawford, if they can work it down here, there, he's going to have a very hard time defending. Usman at a very active and strong 6'10". Scott is 6'7". He looks bigger than that. Here's Perry. He's been held in check tonight. Certainly by his normal standards. He averages 17.3 points a game. He's had two three-pointers, and they came in the first half. Shot clock at four. Short jump shot over the defense is good by Huntsbury. He was poised. He knew the shot clock was about to expire, but he went up softly and cleanly and dropped it home. That's a big bucket, Chris. 52-44, and I believe this is the biggest lead of the game for Louisiana for UNT. Eight points. That is the biggest one of the night. Stewart is bumped off course. Look at these teams battle. In addition, Lynn, this is Louisiana, uh, North Texas's biggest run of the evening. This 8 nothing spurt that has come over the last three and a half minutes plus. Some royalty tonight here, Lynn. Louisiana Tech just recognizing some of the former student athletes that are in the house. One of the names that really drew my ear, the great Dave Simmons. Oh, yeah. Former head coach at McNeese State. Longtime assistant at Northwestern State under Mike McConaughey. Back a couple of stints under Mike McConaughey. In between, in between those, uh, that coaching in Natchitoches, that's when he was the head coach in McNeese. There's a lot of battle. Usman missed a crip shot. And he's kind of grimacing and laughing at the same time, pointing to his chest and saying, my fault, I should have finished it. Louisiana Tech has missed four straight shots. Crawford will take a three. Oh, yes, and that's a big one. That is a huge three-pointer by the big fellow Isaiah Crawford. 
ending UNT's 8 nothing run. Pulling Louisiana Tech within five. Hunsberry goes low, leaves it down low, and a foul call. No, the jump ball is called. And Louisiana Tech will take possession. 52-47, still some work to do by the Bulldogs, but that shot by Crawford was huge, Chris. It looked like things were about to slip away in favor of the Mean Green. The Bulldogs have doubled up the Mean Green from beyond the arc tonight. Eight made for Tech, four for UNT. That surprises me a bit, especially considering the uh, the prowess of Tyler Perry from distance, but not tonight. He's only got two three-pointers. You saw Isaiah Crawford holding that right wrist. We'll see if he has the issues here going forward, working with the right hand. There is contact in the lane and a foul, and Crawford was misguided after the contact by Aaron Scott. I don't think this is a shooting foul. It is not. 23 to fire, 8.09 left in the game. Louisiana Tech trying to come back from a five-point deficit right now. It was eight before Crawford's last three-pointer. This is Jordan Crawford to Isaiah Crawford. Eight seconds to shoot. Crawford puts it on the floor, and a reach-in foul is called apparently against Reuben Jones. Let's take a timeout right here. To the rivalry when it comes to being a head coach, but he saw it plenty of times as an assistant, knows just how efficient that North Texas can be and how hard they work, especially on the defensive end. Crawford needs to bag these free throws, and Louisiana Tech continues to miss with regularity at the stripe. And I'll reiterate my plea, Lynn, because I the coaches go back and watch these broadcasts. These games between these two teams are too good to let this go away. North Texas is going to move to the American. La Tech staying in CUSA. Keep playing in non-conference. No question, and it's not a bad bus ride on Interstate 20. Louisiana Tech takes it away. Crawford on the move. And then he spins in the defensive trouble. It's lost. Stewart gets it back. Three ball left side. Bounces. Bounces. No good. Rebound pulled off by Aaron Scott. I'm with you. UNT and Louisiana Tech should play every game, every year. Maybe home and home every year. I don't know if we can go that far. Why not? <laughs> Huntsbury works his way inside and is able to fend off a defender and gets the two-pointer. That's 11 for Huntsbury. And Louisiana Tech needs a bucket right here, trailing by six, under seven minutes to go. Crawford spinning down on the baseline, stops, puts it up, and scores! He was defended by Aaron Scott, but Crawford was able to work his way free and use the window for the lay-in. And that's not the power game there, that's finesse working your way down low in that situation. A two-possession game, Huntsbury working against Crawford. Crawford puts a chest on him, Huntsbury still dribbling. Goes to the right side, little jump hook, and it's good. Huntsbury is very strong, and he can survive contact. That's a big bucket as Huntsbury is able to power his way in and return the lead to six. For chewing tobacco. Yeah, he, he's, uh, he's self-effacing. He, he doesn't apologize for his personality. He's got a daughter, by the way, who is nationally ranked in rock climbing. I think she's 12 years old and, and is one of the best rock climbers in the country. Has a lot more guts than I do trying that sport. I saw another sport earlier this week that I would never attempt myself. What was that? Platform diving. Who? Was there for the American Athletic Conference. 
swimming and diving championships, of which UNT, by the way, is an affiliate member in swimming and diving this year before they become a full member in that league next year. Crawford backs, spins, shoots, it's blocked partially by Scott. Boy, that was a battle. Scott stayed with him the entire time. Crawford had made up his mind that it was going to be him taking it down low as best he could. Louisiana Tech needs a stop. Huntsbury has it slapped away. Picked up by Louisiana Tech. Willis got the loose ball. This is Willis on the return pass. And he loses the dribble. He may have been fouled. Meanwhile, Louisiana Tech needs to make some free throws, Chris. Five for 11 unofficially. Is that what you have? Six for 13. Okay, so total now. a little bit, but still. Left seven missed free throws at the line. 46%. Willis drops that one cleanly. Let's see if Willis can trap the lead to four. It bounces and goes. And we've got a 56-52 game. North Texas leading. Five and a half to play here in Ruston. Hunsberry works on Bullock. Jump hook off the window. No good. Rebound slapped away. And a foul on Louisiana Tech. Chris, this has turned into a bloody game. Not literally, but these, these teams are exchanging blows. North Texas has hit two out of every three free throws it's attempted tonight. Well, the volume's been low. That's just their seventh attempt yeah. on the evening. While Louisiana Tech has shot 15. Huxbury looking for his 15th point. UNT by six. Willis works against Huntsbury. Isaiah Crawford fakes left, dribbles right. The defender catches up. Mangum for three. Yes, from straight away. And a huge bucket for Dravon Mangum, a 6'8 senior from Roxboro, North Carolina, who also has played at Radford and Charlotte. His first points of the night, Lynn, coming with just over five minutes to go. He turned 23 years old last month, and he hits a big three from straight away. There has been no answer down low for the most part against Guzman. Seventeen unofficially for Usman and Louisiana Tech. We'll take a timeout right here with 4.27 to go. Chris, it's been... Oops. No, they trail Middle Tennessee 61 to 51. North Texas is in second place in CUSA. Two games back of FAU in the loss column. The Mean Green have lost the Owls twice this season, so they'll need the Owls to falter down the stretch here in order to claim a regular season conference championship and a number one seed in Frisco. A two-possession game here as Bullock works it inside. He's cut off on the double team, looking to get it to Mangum. Puts it on the floor, loses it, saves it, and stepped on the baseline. That's a costly, costly turnover against Louisiana Tech. Mangum just got in a little bit too much of a hurry. Coach Hester harps on it over and over again about valuing possessions. And at this point in the ball game, a five-point deficit, four minutes to go, every possession, the weight of them becomes a lot heavier. Huntsbury is double teamed and cut off. Perry still has not tried many shots at all. I don't has he tried a shot in the second half? Not from three-point range. Four on the shot clock and works his way inside. Slings it up and scores! A left-handed spinning shot off the window with a lot of English. That was Perry's second attempt in the second half. Both of them from inside the three-point. He's got eight points. Crawford from straightaway. No. Rebound, Usman. 
That is his 10th rebound. He's got a double-double working, Chris. 17 points, 10 rebounds for Usman. 62-55. This is the second biggest lead of the game for Louisiana Tech. And it comes with just over three minutes remaining in Ruston. The Bulldogs take it away on the steal. By Stewart. And the Bulldogs come right back. Saw there Bullock knew he didn't need the highlight reel one-handed thunder jam. Safely put it in there with two. So Bullock cuts the lead to 62-57. This is an incredibly important possession for Louisiana Tech defensively. Rebound a foul called against Crawford. Crawford is heaving deeply. He has really played hard in a lot of minutes. Well, Louisiana Tech giving it up to Bullock. Stewart with the dish for those last two points. And that's recognizing that there was a schism momentarily in the defense, which doesn't happen often against UNT, but Louisiana Tech attacked it and made it work. Huntsbury puts it up and puts it right into the hands of his teammate, Reuben Jones, for the flush. Well-timed as Reuben Jones collects his second bucket. A native of Houston missed several games at the beginning of this season after off-season surgery. And Willis reigns in a long three. He shot that one from another parish. That is a huge. So hang on to your chairs, tighten the seat belt. 64-60 UNT leading with 2.06 to go in Ruston. UNT seeking its seventh straight victory this season. Louisiana Tech applies some pressure. UNT beats it without too much difficulty. But we'll get it into the hands of Tyler Perry. Crawford is chasing now. Perry kicks it back to Jones. They go back down low for the lay-in by Usman, and he's fouled. And we have seen that time after time after time. Usman is having himself a day down low. Up to 19 points to go along with his 10 rebounds in 30 minutes of action. Incredibly impressive tonight. And add to that what he can do just in every aspect of the game, the strength that he provides to this North Texas ball club. He has just about doubled his season scoring average tonight and has 10 rebounds to go with it. He came in averaging 11.2 points a game. Willis with a really long, low percentage shot. Saved by Louisiana Tech. Willis puts it on the floor, gets down low, scoops it up. Got kind of bumped a little bit. Ball is free and deep near the midcourt line. Tech with another chance. That's blocked out of the hands of Quandre Bullock. But it will stay with the Bulldogs. They've been fortunate. Now the shot clock is at five, Chris, with 75 seconds to go. Louisiana Tech has to be aware of the shot clock. And they have options here. This is certainly something that's been worked on in practice with an inbounds play under their own basket. Limited time on the shot clock. Crawford spinning, uses the window and scores. A very measured, intelligent play by Crawford. That's what I liked about it too, Lynn. He didn't rush it. He knew the exact time he had left to work and took every single millisecond of it. The lead is five. Willis tries to take it away, and now a three ball up, and a three ball in. That's a crusher by Tyree, uh, excuse me, by Tyler Perry. Perry, who has not shot a lot, hits the three ball. He's a 45% three ball shooter. That one was damaging to Louisiana Tech. UNT has matched its biggest lead of eight points. 70 to 62, and Louisiana Tech is going to have to get some in a hurry. Willis has one slapped 
knocked away by Reuben Jones. He was just hanging around and then was able to cleanly swap that one down. We come near the half minute mark. UNT protecting an eight point lead. Perry will just dribble it as long as he's allowed. 10 seconds to shoot, 20 seconds left in the game. That's nestled in, a little teardrop, teardrop jumper by Huntsbury. And this game is in the hands of UNT as they are about to win for the seventh straight time. This is Willis down low, and I don't think he's got the shot off in time. They might count it. I think they're going to go ahead and count it, but UNT has picked up the win, Chris. Seven wins in a row now for the Mean Green. Three in a row in this building.